There's a new religion in town, and it's dominating American culture. It's called wokeism, and you will convert or you'll be canceled. One of the questions I get a lot these days is, how are all the things that are happening in our culture connected? Is there some overarching theme? Is there a foundational connection that makes sense of it all? Think about some events that have happened recently. President Biden's administration filed an appeal on April the 20th of this year in federal court seeking to force all doctors and hospitals in the United States, regardless of religious conviction, to provide transgender surgeries to any patient who requests such services. It's interesting, they've proven by a number of decisions and positions that they hold that they hate boys so much that they teach them that it's better to be a girl. They hate girls so much that they tell them they can no longer have their own showers or toilets or even sports. They hate women so much that they deny that the female is even a fact of reality. And they hate men so much that they declare that masculinity is a toxic social disease. Gender affirming therapy is now legal and available in the state of Washington without parental consent beginning at age 13. We're removing safe places for women across the board, locker rooms, restrooms, prisons, all women's spaces are being done away with. Medical schools now teach without regard to the differences between the male and female body. In fact, various conditions are that present differently in male and female bodies are no longer even identified as subject matter in some medical schools. In the future, your doctor may actually not know how a particular disease displays itself depending on your birth gender. John Kent, <laughs> the son of Clark Kent and Lois Lane, the next generation Superman, beginning in December of this year, is now coming out as bisexual and like his father, he has fallen for a reporter, but this Superman has fallen for a male reporter. Robin, Batman's sidekick, is now openly gay. Thank you, DC Comics. And the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the ELCA, has confirmed the first openly transgender person to serve as a bishop in a major Christian denomination in the U.S. Using the pronoun they, he, she plans to, quote, work for racial, economic, and climate justice locally and globally. No mention of Jesus or, you know, the gospel. How did we get here? What ties these issues all together. I submit that all of the different things that you see happening, the feel of being overwhelmed by cultural and societal change is all tied to a new religion that we can casually refer to as wokeism. And believe me, its adherents have the devotion of true believers. You see, there is a religious impulse that is hardwired into the human condition. We were made to worship. But when truth is actively suppressed, as Paul described in Romans chapter 1, our yearning for worship has to be redirected and we find our loyalty given to false worldviews and fake gods. Let me show you how wokeism is a religion. It doesn't have any supernatural element. There's no God per se to worship. But wokeism does have a core set of beliefs. For example, gender ideology, climate crisis, critical race theory, 
unrestricted abortion and progressive politics. That's the core theological content of this new religion. It has sacred texts, books like White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. Those books, those kinds of books have, have begun to take on the aura of divine revelation within the movement. They do believe in original sin, although for wokeism, original sin is being born white or being a straight male. They have heretics. Heretics are political conservatives and evangelical Christians, typically people who aren't true believers in the cause. And they also have, as we've discovered, an endless collection of prophets and priests. They have everything that a religion has except one significant element. Wokeism lacks an idea of atonement. Now, atonement is a theological word, but it simply means a way to solve the problem of human guilt. You see, atonement suggests that there is some sort of sacrifice, some activity that is necessary to pay the price of justice and to alleviate the guilt that weighs heavy on the human soul. Now in Christianity, the Son of God presents Himself, the Word became flesh and lived among us and we beheld His glory. That's what the Apostle John tells us in John chapter 1. That Son of God gave Himself up for a voluntary death that he did not deserve in order to satisfy the demands of justice for those of us who by our sin have offended an infinite God. That substitutionary death or what we call a substitutionary atonement means that justice has been satisfied, sin is not winked at or ignored, it's paid for, but now we are offered forgiveness and reconciliation with God. That's the message of the Christian gospel. That's the good news of how Christianity presents atonement or the solution to the human condition, which is the weight of guilt and sin. Wokeism is very different. Guilt in wokeism is still experienced. Mankind knows they're guilty. It's a part of, uh, of the brokenness of, of our soul. It's a part of the very condition of being human. But in wokeism, guilt is assuaged. It is handled by sacrifice, but not by the sacrifice of a deity who offers himself as a perfect substitute. In wokeism, guilt is assuaged by sacrificing others. In other words, I solve my guilt problem in wokeism by gaining a feeling of superiority because I've helped eliminate other sinners, thereby improving the human condition in my generation. It's what we call cancel culture. That's what it's all about. Think about it this way. My religious duty within wokeism is that I help silence your dissenting voice, I cost you your job and your livelihood, I shame you into silence and isolation, and by doing so, by taking your contribution to human society out of the mix, my guilt is gone. I have helped eliminate the sins of humanity collectively. Well, here's the problem. Sins are never dealt with collectively. They have to be dealt with individually. But because wokeism doesn't understand atonement, they don't have any answer to the human condition of brokenness. The only way to deal with the cultural battles of our day is to quit assuming that our differences with the Wokies are merely political. We need to understand that this is a clash 
of competing religious worldviews. We're being offered a not-so-subtle replacement for biblical faith. You must not give ground here. The gospel is not outdated. The Bible is not irrelevant to the issues of our day. And God is not absent among us. Interestingly enough, the Bible speaks to this very issue. It was a different competing version of faith in Paul's day. But Paul speaks to this clash of religious worldviews in the first chapter of Galatians. He's talking to a group of Christians who are caught up in the latest theological trend that's sweeping in the, across their, their uh, experience. And he says this in Galatians chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is not just another account, but there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to what we have preached to you, he is to be accursed. As we have said before, even now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. Understand what Paul is suggesting here. He's speaking against those who are trying to influence the church to follow a very different solution to the human problem. Paul's argument is, I'm amazed after you've experienced grace, after you've understood truth, that you would so quickly go for whatever the latest flashy trend is. That's what's happening in our generation. Churches are caught up in this desperate desire to be liked by the culture. That's why you see pride flags hanging from the front of our church buildings across the land. That's why you see uh, this, these, these theological uh, accommodations being made. You know, I find it interesting, uh, just as a side note, uh, we use acronyms in a lot of theological traditions to sort of summarize what it is they believe. For example, uh, reformed thinkers or Calvinists operate by an acronym called TULIP. Uh, there is a branch of, of, of salvation thinking within Christianity called Molinism. They operate with a, a, an acronym called ROSES. And each, each letter represents a different pillar or significant doctrine. There is an acronym for the core beliefs of wokeism. You see, those core beliefs are diversity, inclusion, and equity. Their acronym is DIE. Paul says, I can't believe you would pursue that, that you would chase after what is clearly not true. In fact, he doubles down on the sufficiency of the Word of God and the sufficiency of the gospel. Our churches, our Christian church members, need to double down, not be caught up in what the culture says is attractive or current or flashy. We need to find our way, in some sense, back to the old time religion. I'm not suggesting that we go back to a cultural period where Christianity was ascendant and, and there were elements of Christianity back in the day that, that weren't biblically faithful. I'm saying we need to find our way to the core of what's true in the Word of God and, and let that be the basis of where we stand. Martin Luther had an interesting statement that I think applies here. He said, the devil's nature shows himself in this very kind of situation. If he cannot ruin a person by wrongdoing and persecution, then he will do it by improving them. You see, wokeism suggests that we all need to be improved and that they have the way. Listen, improvement is not the solution to the human condition. We're dead in our trespasses and sins. We need somebody to pay the penalty for our sin to solve our guilt problem and offer us a way of reconciliation. Paul says to those who are 
opposed to the gospel, they are to be accursed. It means more than excommunicated. It means nothing less than they are to be set aside and left in God's hands to be judged by Him. Folks, we've got to hold fast to what's true, and we've got to quit engaging with wokeism as though we're just having a traditional, good old-fashioned American political debate. This is a clash of religious worldviews, and what's at stake is not just the American experiment. What's at stake is the soul of this generation. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, but you've been enamored, captured, if you've bought into wokeism, then with Paul, I have to say, I'm shocked that you so quickly left the good news that actually solves the problem of the human condition. And you've abandoned Jesus to make your way to a cultural placebo with no real solutions and no eternal hope. Find your way back to the gospel. Live by what's true. Rediscover the relevancy of the Word of God. This is Truth Currents. Thank you.